All right, so now I've got my finished proving ground. I've saved it as a PSD, marked it as green. I've saved it as a PNG by going to File, Export as PNG. That goes to my Downloads folder. And then I save that onto my desktop, marked it orange. Now I go to where I submit it in the class, right here. And I start a post with my name. Then I upload the image, and it has to be the... Oh, I didn't save as a PNG. I saved as a JPEG. Either one would work. JPEG fills a whole rectangle. One thing you can do, which is a, a good habit to get into, is since the JPEG or the PNG merges everything onto one layer, you can use that opportunity to do some overall image correction. So if you double click it on a Mac, it will open it up in preview. I'm not sure why it's not, but you can say open it with preview. And then under tools, you can go to adjust color. And these are just like direct adjustments, but just all in one place. And you can try auto levels, right? And that's a pretty big difference. And maybe you like that. And all that does is adjust the levels and just optimize the histogram. Maybe I can dial it back just a little bit. I could play with the color balance, just overall, see what looks better or worse. I can play with the sharpness. I can blur it out. I can sharpen it a little bit. You don't want to do it too much or, or it looks a little too like over-processed. You can dim your highlights. You can brighten your shadows. You can increase your contrast. So it's a nice way to kind of, without affecting your PSD file, just optimize it for posting online. Yeah, and because we're talking so much about textures and overlays, you'll see the difference just between optimizing it and not. to shrink it down, but side by side, it can make a big difference. And we'll check those things before we print anything too. So to me, this one looks better than this one, right? Though they're exactly the same, it's just this is, I adjusted the overall levels balance using preview. All right, now once you've posted it, we need to go back to Photopea, and we need to look at image size. Oh, this is one thing I'll do too, which is kind of fun for these projects. I'll bring in that color corrected JPEG, and I'll just put it right over the top of everything, and I'll just save it within the PSD. Because you'll notice it looks a little bit different. It looks a little bit different optimized within Photopea, within the browser, than it does within preview. But by bringing it on top, it's just like kind of color correction. Then I can use my opacity to just decide how much I want to keep before I print it. All right, now I save it. It's all good. But what I need is I need the image size because I need this information. This is part of the rubric. And if I move this out into a different tab just so I have this information visible while I post that's really helpful because to meet the first rubric criteria I have to accurately identify the resolution pixels per inch and the physical format but I have to do it within the two standard digital uh, image sizes so one would be print size and the other would be screen size, right? So sc standard screen resolution is 72 pixels per inch. Standard print resolution is 300 pixels per inch. Neither of those is 350. So how do I see what the physical dimensions of my piece would be at standard print resolution? I change pixels under image image size to inches. And then I uncheck resample. This is new because we're not going to grow or change the pixels at all. The exact same number of pixels are going to exist. I'm just going to change the potential for the 
the physical output. So I'm going to change the 350 to 300. Please let me. There we go. Then I'm going to click on the gray. And then I see that this is 8 and a half by 11.9 inches at 300 pixels per inch. Even though I cropped down from my original, this is still more than 8 by 10 at 300. So this is good enough for print resolution. So I type that. I say this is 8.56 inches by, I'm just going to say 12 inches because it's 11.99, at 300 pixels per inch. It has to be at either 300 or at 72. Because it's larger than 8 by 10 at 300, that is good enough for standard screen, uh, sorry, standard print <laughs> resolution. You get credit for either one. You just need to accurately identify what your pixel dimensions allow you to do. Now, for the third part of the rubric, I've already matched the anatomy and the angle of lighting for the second part. I have to explain how my creature interacts with its environment, right? I need to address any practical concerns that are obvious from the image. So this is a, a fun place where you can get creative. It's the creative part of creative problem solving. And you can give your creature a name if you want. So, hmm, this wild, Omnibison just eats everything. Um, grazes on the plentiful <laughs> lands. Uh, let's see, landscape or calorie rich landscape. of his native world. Largely peaceful and uh, what are some of the words? What do you say about cows? Like non-threatening, but <laughs> I'll just say slow moving. a massive horn and boned uh, cranium ridge gives ample protection to would-be predators or from would-be predators. The atmosphere is heavy with sugars and fats, making the respiration of the animal, of the creature, uh, labored and requiring larger than usual lung capacity. Let's see. They are solitary creatures, only finding mates by 
during the Grimace purple shake season. And I can always add to it, right? But I'm trying to make sense of how this creature would work in this kind of environment, just as a little paragraph. All right, that is how we submit our first proving ground. You want to make sure that you check all of these full mark criteria. And if you miss it the first time around, you can do it and resubmit it. And as long as you get it by the end of class, you'll have made your first step, first of four, towards earning your creative problem solving badge. All right.